heel as a team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen, believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, way back, back, way back. into the light. Into the light. Into the light. We can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell. One inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. You. I mean, that's that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean. One half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're going to see a guy who will go that itch with you. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Individual, 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 individual. Ideas are bulletproof. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is another live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. Today is March 2nd, 2012. New Year's just flying by. So according to all the uh, doomsdayers, I guess we don't have much time left. End of the world's coming up pretty quick. Huh? I guess uh, I should run around and get my Bible and pray or wait for the rapture. Oh, wait, that already passed. So what, what, what's the next end of the world scenario? What is it, the, the total destruction of the planet and tidal waves and all that stuff? I guess I should go watch 2012 to find out uh, how to survive and make sure I hook up with John Cusack and the fat Russian guy who gets uh, the, the plane and gets them all out of there. So I guess I'm going to have to move to L.A. Only got nine months left. Of course I'm being sarcastic, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just trying to uh, show how absurd that that theory is. I don't think the world is going to end. I think it's going to be the end of an age, as the Mayans said. And uh, I, I believe that humanity is going to – that's going to be the tipping point where humanity takes the, the, uh, the, the red pill as a whole and wakes up. That's going to be the tipping point where it starts to exponentially get faster and faster and faster. And I think that's why they're pushing all this stuff like the NDAA and all this other stuff. A – they want you to be afraid. And B, they, they, they're trying to push it because it also makes them feel better about themselves. You have to remember, these people act like they're in power, but they really aren't the ones that are in power. It is us. And tonight, my guest and myself are going to be getting into various topics, but the first thing we're going to cover is how you can affect change and how you can help bring information to the masses because some people say, well, how can I do it? Popeye, how can I wake people up? They're so dumb. Well, you're going to learn uh, a good, there's many ways to do it, but you're going to learn tonight a good way. We're going to throw some ideas out there, give you some solutions as it were. And I hope everybody takes notes and I hope you guys follow through with some of the ideas we throw out there. So let me bring my guest on. 
You all know him. He's a guest on most of our shows, and uh, he will be hosting his own show here on the Orion Talk Radio Network soon. So let me bring him on, the one, the only, Mr. John Connor from Kanadistan. John, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, Popeye? Pretty good. How's it up there in uh, police state Canada? Oh, well, just as long as you're, it's okay as long as you don't draw any pictures of guns and you, you, they're probably going to have to show ID to, to buy pencils and paper now. Just in Dude, case. I, I want to get into that tonight. I want to talk about that story because that's just insane. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what he's talking about, real quick, a guy was put in jail in Canada because this kid drew a picture of a gun. I'm not kidding you. We'll get into it. Uh, if we have time, I'll even play the clip and we talk about it later. But right now, I want to focus on something that John does specifically. It's like his specialty. And he's actually very good at it. Um, he does what he calls the info jam. Now, John, I'm going to give you the floor. Explain to the listeners the idea behind info jam. And then we'll get into how we can use it to affect change and other things. But go ahead and give them an idea of what info jamming is. Okay, now say here's one, uh, for instance, would be, say, Facebook. Say I wanted to info jam a, a, a video or something, a, a link on, fi on Facebook, some important information. Could be a news article, anything. So I copy the link, the URL for that video or that article, and I'll go around Facebook and leave some comments on some, you know, say some popular uh, fan pages, maybe mainstream media or just mainstream uh, TV propaganda pages that have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that like their page and, and go to their wall all the time. So you just go there and you start commenting and, and uh, engaging with some of the people. And that's kind of how it started. And then it kind of, you know, uh, another thing you can do on Facebook is say, you know, you can upload a photo. So instead of just leaving a comment and pasting a link, you can upload a, a catchy photo and in the comment, before you hit the upload button, paste a link in there. And uh, it's kind of like a photo trap, you know. They'll see the photo, they'll click on the link. And next thing you know, they're, they're seeing vid footage of Building 7 for the first time. Or, you know, something like that. That could be a for instance. That's a good right? idea. I do that with Twitter all the time. I look at um, the trending topics. And if, uh, you, you know, I'll see something that I could, especially something that could fit in with, you know, a, some semblance of truth, you can throw a link to an article in there. Uh, the other day, I forget exactly what it was, there was something trending, and it had um, two words in it that uh, would go along with uh, the title to another article. So I kind of tweak the title a little bit and then threw a link. And bam, it, it brought me like an extra 50, 60 hits within about 10 minutes just from Twitter alone because I have a couple thousand uh, subscribers. And <clears throat> I realized that other people were, would, once they realized what I was doing, they would retweet it. So, and I've done this before, and it works. It just works so well because it, pick a trending topic. Say you have one that says Disney, right, for an example. Well, this was actually um, one night. We were on air, I think it was uh, like two weeks ago, it was during WTF, and uh, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing, I was muted, and I noticed that on, on Twitter, the trending topic was the Lion King. So I took, because I guess it was on air somewhere and people were watching it, and everybody and their mother was, I'm watching the Lion King, so I took videos of all the subliminals, like the sex subliminals and stuff in the Disney movies, and I put... Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I put, like, watch Lion King full-length free here, and I put a link, you know? Boom, sent it out. Dude, that thing went viral. People were just, oh, really? Click on it. And then, and then I went and I put um, hidden sexual subliminals inside the Lion King, and I made sure I typed out the words the Lion King because so, you want to make sure that it picks up that because it will automatically, if it's, if it's typed out, if it's not like a hashtag, if it's something that, you know, Disney... Anything you type with the word Disney in it, boom, gets put into that. And people will go look and say, hey, what's trending? And then they'll look through all the tweets. And that's how you, I mean, that's how I expose people to truth. That's, that's very I, interesting because I, I, I was totally unaware of this. I don't know exactly how Twitter works because I, I couldn't really figure out how it worked uh, in order to info jam it to make it, you know, successful. But uh, that's very interesting what you're saying there. It's, oh, it's real easy. 
it's so line. easy. It's like they, they make it so easy. It, it's almost like the, you know what I mean? Like Twitter was invented for info jamming, John. It's perfect. I'll have to, I'll have to off air show you, go over the, the, the fine points of Twitter. I know a lot of other people that aren't into Twitter either. They're like, well, what, why do you use it? Because I have over 3,300 subscribers on Twitter, so when I post a new article, I just post a link in the title to the article, and it goes out to over 3,000 people. So Twitter's actually a really useful tool if you know how to use it. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be getting into more when we come back, more solutions, how you can info jam, how you can fight the mainstream media, and how you can use their social networks against them. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you an example right now live, um, and, uh, like a good way to... Uh, steal a trending topic and use it to pump some information out or to info jam it. Okay, go to Twitter right now. If you look on Twitter, if any of you know how to use it, on the trending topics, you'll see a bunch of things. One of them is Uncle Creepy. Uh, now, when you click on it, it brings up, you'll see there's tons of all different tweets and they keep coming in, you know, by the second. And uh, he's an MMA fighter, okay? Well, if you go back to the home page, right, and you see your little thing where you can tweet, just type in uh, the real and then Uncle Creepy and then a space and put a link to um, what's the uh, name of the conspiracy of silence, the Franklin cover up. So like the real <clears throat> or real creep, you know, something with Uncle Creepy. So like, you know, the real quote unquote Uncle Creepy and then. The link, maybe put a link to the articles, to the book, something. That's a, just a, a quick example. And you can do it all the time. If you pay attention to Twitter, once you go on there, you'll see the trending topics. You can change it. and You can make it for the United States. You can make it for the world. You can make it for just your local area. So it, it, Twitter can be used as a very effective way of marketing the truth, for lack of a better term, because they use it for marketing to go after other people. Uh, you get spammers on there. Department of Homeland Security uses it to to get messages out. So if the government's going to use it, we might as well use it as well. And it's not that hard to use. It's very easy. I suggest you just do it from the computer because it's much easier to you know interface to do all this stuff from the computer than it is from a, like a smartphone. But you can do it from both. But either way, you know, Twitter can be used as a very effective tool. Again, you could you could take these these trending topics. And you can pick from just from your local city all the way out to the world and then throw links out there. And the people that are checking those trending topics, it'll pop up. And you'd be surprised how many people – I have a lot of followers because I do that. I literally get about 100 followers a day on Twitter. It, it used to be – you know, so it started off I would get like 5, 10, and then it, it ebbed off at like 30. And now literally I'll get anywhere between about 65 to 100 new followers a day. And it's because I keep doing this and because people see the clicks, you know, they see the links, they click it and they go, oh, my God. You know, there are people out there that do care about the truth. A lot of them don't see any of this. Uh, good, good friend of mine, fellow show host here on Orion, Tim Watts. He's been conversating with people uh, he knows off, you know, off air and uh, just going around, you know, his daily business. And he always brings up the one thing that the, the drones – the 30,000 drones or whatever the hell the number is that they want flying around overhead in the next couple of years, and nobody knows about this stuff. And every time he talks to them about it, nobody ever says, oh, well, that's really, you know, that's a good thing. I, I can see that how that could be to protect us. Nobody is comfortable with it. So you can see how they only put that out there for a brief minute, you know, in the public, in the, uh, the public theater, the general the general public's awareness, the arena of that awareness. It was only out there for a brief period of time and then put away. The only place you'll find any real information about it is in the alternative media. That's a topic to info jam. Info jam the fact that they're trying to take away the Second Amendment, you know, this UN treaty with Hillary Clinton, or should I call her Hitlery Clinton? I mean, this woman's evil. She's just pure evil. And this isn't her or Obama. They, they, although they hate guns, that's not that's not them trying to take. You know, people get too lost in this partisan crap, the left right right paradigm. Oh, it's the right side. No, it's the left. No, they're all working in collusion. They're all assholes. There is no right or left. They're all just scumbags. Politician means you know what politician means? Blood sucker. 
politicians are evil, okay? They have, honestly, you don't need a bunch of people in a, and I'm not saying anarchy, but do you really need a bunch of 90-year-old people that are out of touch with reality telling you what to do with the Internet? Most of these guys don't even know how to use Facebook or Twitter. It's unreal. All right, anyway, I could get lost on a rant on that uh, by itself. Um, getting back to the info jamming. John, you use Facebook. So how do you use Facebook as I know how I do it, but like I've explained it a thousand times how I do it. And I'll, I'll for this, you know, for tonight's purposes, I'll do it again. But I want to give you the floor a little bit. Tell the people how you do it, because I, I you do it the same way, but you also have your own little flair to it. Like when you did that video with Roseanne Barr, that thing went crazy. And that ended up getting up on uh, um, what do you call it? She ended up posting it on her website, I believe. So you, yeah, you've done a lot. Of that I'm not sure how somebody just saw that video I made. That yeah, but that in. thing went viral. I upl exactly. I uploaded a copy of my, uh, of it too. I took your she copy and uploaded it to my channel, and that went viral as well. It got nailed on sites. So y you were smart because you found this clip of her pretty much going off. And while she was going off, she was talking about things that, you know, you'd have to know about the New World Order to understand. She was talking about the mind control. She, she brought up, uh, you know, she, what she, she didn't say Kathy O'Brien's name, but she pretty much, you know, spelled out some of the, the – what she was talking about, you could tell where she got her information from, especially if you know that she actually introduced Kathy O'Brien at a speaking engagement. So yes, Roseanne Barr knows all about MK Ultra, and I'm sure she knows all about the Freedom Train. If she's introducing Kathy O'Brien and Mark Phillips at a speaking engagement, and she knows all about what you know, she she said that she had read the book and she she got a chance to meet them. So obviously she she knows about the deal. But the point is, it's interesting to have somebody that's quote unquote out there that has a lot of followers and people listen to. You were able to make an interesting video with her rant, and it went viral because it was. It, it it was a mixture of everything, but it was your use of it that made it go viral. You were the your intelligent marketing idea, uh, it, it, you know, if you want to put it that way. You got it. You did a really smart thing by you know throwing it up on uh, just the, the style of the video and everything. People like that. That is a good. That's a good form of activism. If people can't, you know, what am I supposed to do? I I live in, you know. Antarctica, what the hell can I do? Or I live out in the middle of nowhere, what can I do? You can do what John does. You, he makes videos all the time. I like when you make you make a video like promoting Ron Paul or something, and then you, you title it something completely different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, How many hits uh, do you get from that, for that's real? Probably, like, oh, I don't know the real views because I know, I, I'm sure uh, YouTube is censoring. We've caught, I've caught them by comparing uh, my blog stats to them. And the share statistics to their to my view counts. So I, I mean, I have no idea. But the Ron Rowling gets quite a few views. And the other thing is, is the, the folks at the Daily Poll picked up on that Ron Rowling and the info jamming. And uh, I'm sure they're they've been running around the the matrix, or so to say, uh, you know, leaving links everywhere and uploading new videos. But that that's it's basically like Rick Rowling, but with Ron Paul. <laughs> that's awesome. And I notice you've been doing it a lot. I notice you like you know, you'll say things like uh, Newt Gingrich's newest campaign ad or something like that, or, or something. Even uh, I've seen you even put weirder titles up, but they're catchy. They're you know that's that's another way to do it. I, I and don't try to scam people, but I mean I guess you're kind of are, but at the same token, you know what I mean. Don't. don't you could try to maybe just twist and if you don't want to completely skim just twist the name a little bit maybe you know what i mean but it's definitely you know if you say britney spears you know gets naked or something and it's a video about health information you know like a five or six minute video about uh uh yeah eating the proper food or better yet if if you know a woman who's awake and she's beautiful you know she's if she's an attractive woman have her put on some um some sort of low-cut shirt or something. Actually, uh, credit goes to Sonia from The Truther Girl. She did a test on this the other day, and she was right. The video that was filled with information went more viral because she wore a low-cut shirt. So just goes to show you the mentality of the plebs. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. John and I were talking about jamming the media, and you've actually got... 
an event coming up at what the end of this month, the twenty second, I believe it is, John. Yeah, it is on a uh, March twenty second, three two two. There just so happens to be a worldwide conference at uh, what is it? Agenda twenty one now dot org. And mm. uh, there's a worldwide internet conference for students. Isn't three two two the number of uh, skull and bones? Skull and bones. Well, we can't talk about that here, but no. <laughs> mm. To quote George Bush on that, uh, that would be interesting if that was there. <clears throat> I think that's the number. If it is, of course, that would be why they would having interesting that they'd be having Agenda Twenty One meetings on that day. But go on. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So you guys are having some sort of an event on the twenty second. Well, they are at agenda twenty one dot org. It's a uh, worldwide international conference. I'm not sure. It may be a video conference. May just be audio. I'm not sure if we can paste links there or not. I'm, there probably will be a ch text chat. So the way we do this is we, I just go there and, and sign up for the conference, and I'll be there to uh, talk to the youth, and, and I'll have some information for them. Uh, and that's what info jamming is. A lot, of, a lot of activists, I know when this first started about a year ago, you know, anonymous was a big thing. So a lot of people would get into this, and they'd all have their anonymous pictures up, and it's like, look, we're not hacktivists we don't i don't know how to hack we don't hack we go right in through the front door we'll sign up to news websites you know with my email address we'll just sign up and comment on articles you know i'm not you know this isn't about going in the back door so we're just going to go to the conference and uh, try to engage some of these kids that uh, they're trying to brainwash and un undoctrinate them <laughs> i like that undoctrinate them try to yeah expose the expose them to some truth it's pretty hard nowadays i mean they don't get it in, they don't get it in school most of the school system is now it's amazing they're all using ipads and computers and stuff when i was a kid you weren't even allowed to use a calculator and only at certain times during the day could you you know uh, if the teacher let you use it during you know, regular you know, if you're just doing like multiplication tables or you know, or not even tables, but um, like mathematical equations and stuff, and you needed a calculator for it. If it was during class, that was one thing. But if it was a test during class, you couldn't use a calculator. You weren't allowed. You took your mm -hmm. SATs. You weren't allowed to use a calculator. You had to use pencil and paper, man. You had to do it with your brain. And now everything is computerized. And Charlotte Isserby talked about that. She said that they were going to do that back in the 80s. She said they were, they were going to dumb everybody down. And the, the, the eventual goal is computers. And now they want to put everything on computers. They want to use e-books. And what better way to wipe something out than have it on an e-book or change it? You know, you go to sleep. Chapter 32 says Abe Lincoln was a great president. You wake up. Chapter 32 now says Abe Lincoln was a crappy president. You know, and it's just an e it's a quick example. Yeah, Go on, yeah. John. that's that's definitely it. But I mean, uh, so anyways, back, we're gonna go to this uh, info jam, the the UN thing, and and see how that works. But lately, uh, we had an idea, and I don't know if maybe you or Bob or somebody will want to get in on this, but we want to call up the weather stations uh, and ask them about geoengineering and uh, some of this radiation that's going on and just, you know, just kind of info call them and, and put them on the spot, so to say. And I mean, I know we've got our local uh, weather network uh, website here and I've been uploading photos and videos to their, to their website. They have a place. So I sign up to the website and you can upload your own photos and videos. So I just start uploading chemtrail photos and, can't, you know, what in the world are they spraying? All right, we'll upload this to the weather network <laughs> and uh, see how they like it, right? Um, so, yeah, we're working. Michael Murphy's got a second one coming out. Uh, it's coming out, I believe he said, sometime in October is what their, their target uh, month to release it is. And it's called Why in the World Are They Spraying? And they go into the, the why end of it. I just had him on a couple, I think it was last week I had him on. And uh, we got into it and I did a podcast with him uh, about it. So you guys could you know info jam them with that too cuz i mean that's a good thing and there's what did he say i forget the guy's name scott stevens or something like that some famous weatherman uh, he got fired from his job because the guy spoke out about uh, geoengineering and chemtrails and stuff being real and he ended up getting fired from his job because of it so 
Uh, I mean, you could info jam that. That'd be a good idea. Take when that movie comes out. Take the clip of this famous weatherman and jam the weather stations with it. And yeah. people should do it now too. That's a good idea, John. Like when the Weather Channel, you people should email the Weather Channel, or if they if they allow call-ins ever or whatever, emails. Call them. Call your local newsman. Harass them and say, you know, hey, what's up? Why don't you ever talk about this? And if they say, oh, that that doesn't exist, be like, really? And show them the clips of the uh, of these other weathermen talking about it. And when they, what do they call it? Chaff. Oh, that's the military. They sometimes they spray chaff as a as a way of uh, for testing. Six and days. Of course, a they're week. not. It's five years. Yeah, six days a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> six days a week. Three hundred. You know. It, it, <laughs> it's dude. It's it's crap. It's a lie. You know what they're doing. Yeah. It's geoengineering. How's can, is Canada getting sprayed like we are down here? Because we're getting hit down here hardcore. Yeah, they're spraying us like rats and cockroaches. It's ridiculous. I I never see the sun anymore. You know, it's what's it like outside? Well, we've got cocaine line cloud cover rolling in, but the weather weather station doesn't seem to report it. They just put fluffy. Clouds, uh, fluffy clouds, overcast sky. Meanwhile, look outside, and it's like a crisscross board with a, you know, this chem cloud canopy over top. You got can sun dogs all over the place. I mean, it's some piss yellow right. haze in the sky. That after they spray like an hour or two, it kind of gets that, like that hazy, just ugh. Like you could tell there's crap floating around in the air. You're just like God. And it's blocking I when, everything. I remember when these illustrations years ago seemed uh, a little, you know, a little over exaggerated in some of their chemtrail. They had some ridiculous ones. Now that that those ridiculous photos that he's that he drew are reality in our daily skies. You know, I thought the same thing. You know, you look at the, the especially the colors you use, where it's all hazy and they can't see anything. That's exactly what it looks like outside. And where I live, it's gorgeous. It, it, it shouldn't look like that. You should see sun and the occasional, you know, puffy, big, uh, cotton ball-looking type cloud. And we don't have that anymore. I mean, we have that, but a lot of times, more often than not, you have. These just the lines in the sky. I mean, it's so ridiculous to the point where it, it used to be. I remember years it, years ago, it was hard to catch uh, one of these got you know planes spraying. Remember how it used to be? You know, if someone got video footage, it was coveted because it was so hard to catch them spraying. And now, at any given day, you could walk outside and look up, and if they're spraying, you can see one of the jets doing it. And yeah. I I I've clearly shown in videos the difference between. Uh, a chemtrail day and a non-chemtrail day down here. Uh, I, I've literally shot two different videos on two different days, exactly seven days apart, where one day they sprayed that crap out of it, and uh, I waited, and I wanted a clear, perfect day. And uh, exactly a week later, I shot a, a second part of the video, and I put it side by side, and when you look at them, John, it's disgusting, because one, you can see the, the tropical blue sky that it's supposed to be in, and the other one, it just looks like... You can see all this crap. And when they spray down here, you can literally watch it like spider web out. I don't know how it is because I know up there it's a little colder, so it might react differently to the colder air. But down here, you can literally just watch it. And it's like it's like watching this spider web of whatever the hell it is because I'm sure there's, you know, there's barium, strontium, all this other crap in there. But what else is in there that we don't know? And it's aluminum. And it's just you can see it kind of spreading out. And the next day, usually within 12 to 24 hours, I can go out and I have a steel table out on my deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have, a, like, a, not a deck, like a little balcony. And out on the little balcony, uh, I, I can go out there and I'll wipe the table clean. And they'll spray all day. And within 12 to 24 hours, there'll be a layer of this, like, it looks like dust. But if you put on a glove and, like, you wipe it, you'll see it's almost like it's particulate matter. Almost like it's granulated metal. Now, if all that crap is, you know, building up in a 12 to 24 hour period on my table, is that going in the food, the lung, my lungs, my animals' lungs, my wife's lungs, the grass, the water supply? I mean, it's really disgusting. You could do simple tests to check for crap in the air. In fact, I'll tell you how to do that when we come back. Stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the final segment of the first hour. Now, during the break, I had a question. Somebody uh, sent me a question through Skype, and they asked me, uh, they, they said, you know, it was a funny thing that you, you mentioned the, those uh, trails off of planes. Uh, I haven't seen them, you know, I've seen them a couple times now, and I was talking to my friends the other day, and we didn't know what they were, and what is that? It, it's amazing how... Everybody is starting to wake up and just, you can't not see it. I mean, you walk outside and you look up and you go, and the sky didn't look this effed up when I was a kid. I mean, little kids now in the future, they probably won't be able to say that because they'll be like, man, the sky always had those lines in it. But when I was a kid, I remember a time when that crap wasn't in the sky. And the only time you saw a contrail was if a jet was flying at like 30,000 feet. Now, you don't, you do not see that. It's not normal for stuff to be coming out of the back of a plane and just, head, you know, in the air for an hour before it dissipates. There's literally millions of videos and pictures of this stuff online. And a great movie for anybody to look up if they want to watch and kind of learn about it as a, a uh, kind of a beginner's point on it. But you can go look up. I would suggest doing research on the Internet. On uh, You can go on federaljack.com, which is my site. Go on the intelhub.com. I know they have a lot of articles about chemtrails. They're, they're heavily involved in this. Uh, between just uh, our two sites alone, there's a ton of information about it. Look up Evergreen for people that are interested and know their, uh, know their history. Evergreen is the name of a company now that sells, quote, unquote, firefighting airplanes. But they also make planes. Th they, they make planes that can spray pretty much anything, basically. And this company is actually a front company. A front company, Popeye, a front company for who? For the Central Intelligence Agency. Evergreen Air used to be known by a different name. Can anybody take a guess? You know anything about the drug trade out of Vietnam, John? Uh, no, but I'm just going to take a guess here. Is Evergreen uh, partly owned by uh, the Cheney, Rumsfeld, Bush team? Well, I'm sure if you dig into it, I'm sure they're in there. But the CIA, it's actually a CIA front company. Are they the ones Kinda that sprayed like, the... Go on. Did, are they the ones that sprayed the Craigsit as well? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I wonder if they made some of the planes that did spray some of the Craigsit because a lot of that was um, put out. To, I mean, I know the Coast Guard was spraying, but a lot of that stuff was put out to... Uh, to task to private contractors who had specialized planes with tanks and stuff on it, and that's what Evergreen makes. But they are formally known as Air America. If anybody knows anything about the Vietnam War, look up Air America. That is who Evergreen is. It's a CIA front company. Now, Air America specialized in running drugs and guns. So you don't think that they would get involved in other aspects of things? It's the scope of this is so big; it's unbelievable. I mean, look, they spray here, and I'm in Florida, and John, you're what, fifteen hundred, two thousand miles away up in Canada, and you have the same you have the same crappy experience with the the crap floating in the sky and getting sprayed as we do, you know? Yeah, it's not just in the cities because folks will say, "Oh, well, you're in a major city; they're just doing it around the cities." And I've gone five hours north, eight hours north of Toronto which is like eight, 900 kilometers in the middle of nowhere. There's no town, big towns or cities. It's just tiny little dinky towns in the middle of nowhere. And they're, it's tic-tac-toe boards, you know. So it's, it's, it's not just the big population centers. Dude, the craziest thing I ever saw in the sky down here, and I, I have a video of it. I have to find it so I can re-upload it because it was on one of the older channels that got taken down. But I shot it with my cell phone, um, and it was... It, it was almost a complete circle. There was a four in the sky, and there was almost a complete circle around it. And I looked at my friend that was on the ground, and I said, yeah, because clouds do that. And because contrails do that. That's natural. And another thing, nature doesn't do things in perfect right angles. Nature doesn't grow things at perfect 90-degree angles. That's man. That's sacred geometry. But okay? the square, square clouds coming in aren't normal, you mean? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just amazes me. You, I put a, I put together a video about uh, Hurricane Aaron, and uh, Aaron was a Category Three storm that was actually supposed to hit New York City and the East Coast on 
and uh, it suddenly got bounced out to sea like a pinball by this high pressure dome that comes down. So I put the video, all I did was, I didn't say that that's exactly what happened. All I did was put the evidence up there and I put this, this simulation, uh, the History Channel actually did this, uh, uh, this show and they talked about it and they showed this simulation of how they could steer a hurricane using these high pressure domes. And I put, I, I shrunk that down and I put the actual satellite footage of Hurricane Aaron from NOAA and you watch the two of them and dude, I'm gonna tell you, it, it's almost like they, they literally, made this video showing what they did with Hurricane Aaron. You know what I mean? Like the, the video that the History Channel did was done af, you know, years after 9-11, but it's almost like they watched that video and almost mimicked what it did because it's just incredible. It's incredible how this, the high-pressure system comes in and bounces it. Anyway, I also in the video explained can, you know, how geoengineering, seeding the clouds and stuff like that, just the basics, not going into super details about chemtrails and everything because it was already long and there was enough information that people were going to say. I knew they were going to be like, oh, that's bullshit. Well, I got one. I had a guy tell me, if you think we can manipulate the weather, you're crazy. And I laughed because... Set, uh, cloud seeding goes back to the 50s. The British were doing it. They actually flooded out one of their own cities. It's on, they actually, the RAF now, you know, years and years later, they've admitted that playing around and seeding the clouds, they accidentally caused this massive flood, which killed civilians and flooded out a couple uh, towns, villages, whatever the hell they were at the time, back in the 50s. We did it over the Ho Chi Minh Trail, Route 1, or Highway 1, as they called it. We, f we couldn't bomb the crap out of it. We, we bombed the crap out of it. We couldn't shut it down, so we flooded it out. How do you think we flooded it out? We made it rain. We extended the monsoon season. What'd they say? Ben Livingston was the first guy that did it. Jones interviewed him. He said it was, uh, they extended it by like three or four weeks, or maybe even five weeks. They extended the monsoon season. They wiped out the whole supply line. With what bombs and millions of dollars of bombs and bombing runs and everything else, what that couldn't do they were able to do with Mother Nature. Now, what kind of perfect weapon would Mother Nature be? Think about that for a minute. Can you imagine that, John? You could cause earthquakes, you could, and, and tsunamis, and, and have, you know, natural disasters in country, which, countries, and kill millions of people. Oh, wait a minute. That's happened already. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I wonder... There's if there if there's no such thing as tectonic weaponry or we weaponized weather, then how come there are treaties going back into the 80s and 70s, international treaties, not to use them on other countries? I'd have to go back and dig for the names of those treaties. No, that's a good point. You're right. There are there are treaties back uh, <clears throat> I, 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 at least in the to the 70s. I know of even maybe back into the 60s that. Uh, and I know of definitely in the 80s they talked about it, that they didn't want, you know, Russia to use an earthquake weapon on the United States, and, you, did, you know, Russia didn't want the United States to use it on them. Remember that, that Russian general, that, or he's an ex-general, now he's um, parliament oh, or some... You know, I'm talking about the one that came out, and, oh, we wipe you off. Right after Japan got hit by a, a, a tsunami, he's like, we wipe you off the, the map. He was talking to Georgia. Because Georgia was, you know, we were screwing with Russia through Georgia. And uh, it, it, they pretty much, she said, you know, if you keep effing with us, we're going to, you know, look what happened to Japan. We could do the same thing to you. We have weather weapons and stuff. And he, there's a video on YouTube about it. It's like a year and a half, two years ago. I forget the guy's name. I couldn't try to pronounce it even if you wanted me to. Like Vladimir something or whatever. I'm probably even wrong on his first name. But just look up Russian general talks about scalar weapons or weather weapons or, or earthquake weapons. This kind of technology exists. Think about it. The, the president could order a strike on, let's say, Iran. You know, Iran a couple years ago, I remember, was it like 10 years ago now? They had this massive earthquake, killed, I think, a couple hundred thousand people. Hmm. That area is a massive, massive earthquake zone. The Middle East, I mean, you can have, you, you, first of all, you can have earthquakes. All That whole area is prone to earthquakes. But where Iran sits, it's actually uh, not really, I wouldn't consider Iran to be part of the Middle East. I would say Iran is kind of slash Middle East slash Asia because it's right there at the cusp of both. But um, they have earthquakes there. 
You don't think that they if the, think about that for a second. If the president, yeah, you know, why wouldn't they use that instead of nukes? Well, they like John said, they have treaties. You know, there's certain things they they still do have to abide by. Can you imagine if they didn't abide by some of these treaties, they would be, by definition, they could be gone after as war criminals. Although I know Bush and Cheney are considered war criminals by law now because I uh, was it in Spain? I think it was the court. Uh, the court in Spain found that there was uh, more than enough probable evidence to prove that they were war criminals and uh, they lied and everything else basic, uh, about Iraq. So, I mean, it's on the record. It doesn't mean our, our government's going to go after them, but at least it's on the record there as well. So, But this, getting back to the weather stuff, this, again, they, what would happen if Bush decided he didn't want to play and, and, you know, nice, and they wanted to use the weapons against the country that pissed them off? Or what happens if these ruling elites that act because it's not really Bush or Obama what happens if they wanted to use it against another country like mm, Japan hmm what if that huge tsunami and earthquake in Japan what if that was a result of tectonic weaponry what if wouldn't that be effed up who would be responsible for all those deaths all right ladies and gentlemen stay tuned hour one number one flew by hour number two coming up ladies and gentlemen we are back with our number two here on tonight's edition of down the rabbit hole i am your host popeye from federaljack.com and i'm joined by my good friend john connor up in canada stan john what is up with canada lately you guys are starting to lose your freedoms faster than we are i mean i i know the united states is headed you know <laughs> down the crapper but canada was always this well at least to to me that you guys always kind of seemed more civilized you know a little bit a little bit of a hope that maybe we could you know look their police officers act civilly then uh i saw the g20 and i was like okay maybe they don't act civilly and now you guys are just headed down the same road as the United States. Uh, like you brought up the first hour, some guy got arrested for his daughter drawing a picture of a gun. That's insane. What do you think? Yeah, it is It is pretty insane. It's basically, it's borderline, it's basically a thought crime. He got arrested for somebody else's thought crime. Somebody else used their mind and decided to draw a picture of, of an object. And then he got arrested for what somebody else drew. It's not like he even drew the picture of the gun. Which, again, is not a crime, <laughs> you know? So that'd be like if I got arrested for you drawing it, you drew a picture of a gun, and I got arrested for it. I mean, how does that even make sense? I mean, I take it it was his daughter, but still, it's, it's a drawing. And you have to explain to some of the listeners, because a lot of them are in the United States. In Canada, it's illegal to own a pistol, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Small... Uh, firearms, handguns are banned. So you can, I think it's just uh, rifles and, and shotguns basically that that are permissible. But uh, Which, yeah, that really makes a lot of sense that they would take away handguns but you can't have a shotgun because or, you, excuse me, you can have a shotgun but you can't have a handgun. That makes no sense. I mean, yeah, you can't hide a shotgun very easily underneath your trench coat, but uh, if you're a bad guy, are you really going to abide by the rules and not carry a gun anyway? I mean, that... <laughs> It just it, it it makes no sense, dude. No, exactly. So I mean, now in in, re, in a recent poll, even on the communist broadcasting company, the CBC we have up here, uh, they they had a recent poll over gun rights. Can't remember the exact wording, but yeah, it looked like it uh, sixty something percent of Canadians felt that they should have the right to to have a gun in their house to defend their property. Which is which really surprised me because I was like, "Whoa!" All of a sudden, Canada likes gun rights. All of a sudden, that's that's strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys were a little more liberal in that area. You guys weren't really like very, very big gun enthusiasts. So that that's actually nice to hear. Was that, I guess that that made you feel good, right? You were like, "Wow, more people out there like me." Yeah, well, I mean, I I think they're starting to see the dangers, and that government is not going to protect them from anything. You know, that's my hope anyway. They're starting to realize there are clear and present dangers. And, you know, it's it, it's one thing, you know, if I could, if I had a time machine to go uninvent the gun, and, I mean, maybe, but even still, people just kill each other with a fork or a spoon or whatever they get their hands on if they really want to kill somebody. So, you know, it's it's better to have the uh, honest citizens armed and, and uh, put them on an even keel with the criminals. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure about this. You know, are they going to start? Uh, you're going to have to get ID to buy pencils and paper now. You're going to be on a terrorist well, watch list. You have you got to, two? You're going to be on a terrorist watch watch list just because you have a thought pretty soon. I mean, this is that's what it's getting to. But the way they, you know, like we, I, I brought this up on WTF when we were on WTF on Monday together. The way that they ambushed the father was pretty shady. I mean, they just they. <laughs> They brought him to the principal's office where they had three cops waiting. I mean, think about that. You're, we're, you, sir, you need to come to the principal's office. I would have been like, uh, something's up. You know, my red flag indicator would have gone up. As soon as I saw the cops in there, I would have realized something was going down. That's just insane. You're under arrest because you're, we have, uh, you know, we have belief because your daughter drew a picture that you have a gun in your house. Are you insane? She's a kid. She watches television. How about if she was a boy and she played video games? <laughs> I, I, what are they going to do, ban Xbox now next? Because you can have a virtual gun and virtually kill people? I mean, think well, about how stupid that is. It's Everything's at one extreme into another. So you can't draw a picture of a gun, but you can have a video game that goes around blowing people's heads off. Right? And that's like the sole purpose of most of these first-person shooter games is to kill everybody and everything in your way. Yeah. So yeah. it just it doesn't make any sense. You can't draw a picture of it and the guy goes to jail and gets his rights violated. But, at, you know, we don't want children around guns. We had school shootings or whatever. But at the same time, you have these kids being exposed to Call of Duty or any other number of violent video games. And that's okay. You know, the Call of Duty video game gives you points, extra points and awards for slitting someone's throat. And sometimes you get a, a neat, a neat uh, very uh, clean, high-resolution graphic uh, cinematic of, you know, cutting a guy's throat or stabbing him uh, in some, you know, really awesome, cool way that the special forces would. But you can't draw a picture of a gun without having the cops come to your house. Does, does that make any sense? What would happen if the kid saw the gun in the video game? It's even worse because it's not even as if he drew the gun himself. It, somebody else drew the gun and with a crayon at that. So I'm not it's sure. Look, kid drawing right? a picture of a freaking gun. Dude, when I was a kid, I used to draw tanks and planes and soldiers shooting each other and, you know, all this other crap. Never once did I get, you know, oh, you're violent. You draw violent pictures. We never had that when I was a kid. I mean, that's what boys did. If they doodled, they doodled stuff like that or footballs or something. Well, in the and future, just, they'll, just be, they'll just send drones and the guy will say, what happened to Timmy's house over there? They're like, oh, it's his, it, he drew a picture of a gun. <laughs> or his kid was a stick like a gun and they just, yeah. You know, we could people could think that we're joking around about it, but that's kind of what's pretty much going to happen. The census gets your GPS coordinates here in the United States a couple of years ago, and now we're going to have 30,000 drones flying overhead. That's just awesome. Wait till one of those drones hits a cargo plane. I had this conversation with someone the other day. They were like, man, what happens when one of those things hits a cargo plane? Because, ladies and gentlemen, that happens a lot in Afghanistan. A lot. More than you think. It's like the term, they have a term for losing a nuke. It's called a broken arrow. And I don't know what's scarier, the fact that they lose a nuke, they, that they, they, they actually do lose nukes, or the fact that it's happened so many times that they came up with a nickname for it. Well, just another example of that. John, let me ask you something. What would you do? I mean, honestly... What would you do if that was your kid? Would you flip out if if you got arrested and brought to jail for your kid drawing a gun? Would would you literally, you know, what would you do? How would you react? Because you live in Canada, so I can't really give a good example of how I would react because I don't live there. I think you'd have to, you'd probably have to get into uh, something uh, like a personal lawsuit or something against the people who who uh, started the whole instance in the first place, which would be. The uh, CAS, which is the equivalent to CPS in the States. It's uh, Children's Aid Society, I believe it's called up here. And uh, they're the ones that called the police. The teacher ran to CAS. CAS called the cops to meet them down there. 
Uh, so he could go after the cops, but they were just, you know, listening to the family courts, basically. Um, so I, I would, you know, go after the family courts and saying, you know, this is ridiculous. You're wasting my time. And they should, he should sue for his time. Uh, money is all the, the stress of having to go to court and deal with this nonsense. And uh, that's what I would, I would say to do, sue them personally. It's just frustrating to me, you know, as a, I guess, a free person to hear that, you know, you're, <laughs> you have to resort to dealing with, you must go to court. You know what I mean? It just sucks that you your hands are tied. And you know when you get to the court system, you're probably going to get shafted anyway because that's how it works. It's just so frustrating. When I was a little kid, I knew the system was rigged against us. Unbelievable. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We got three segments left, so I got plenty of time to get into the, well, one more story, and I want to play the clip for you guys here, but I have another story coming up for you that's going to rock your world. A mother was arrested because she was preventing them. When I say them, I mean the TSA scumbags from groping her daughter. That's right. Mothers, you don't want your daughter's vaginas to be groped by some fat, gnarly pig of a human being? You'll get arrested. At least up in, I think it was in New York, which wouldn't surprise me if it was New York City because Mayor uh, Mike Hitler Bloomberg, I don't care if he's a Jew, he, he, run, he rules with an iron fist. He's a fascist. You know, he bitched when Rudy Giuliani stayed in, as the, and I'm not defending Giuliani, he's a piece of trash too. But when, after 9-11, um, Giuliani stayed on for an extra, I think it was like three months, and then um, Bloomberg became the mayor. He bitched about that, said oh, it was against the law, and blah, 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 blah. He argued, and I can do just as fine as a job as Rudy can, and this, that, the other thing, and all this crap. And at the end of his first two terms, what did he do? He had the law changed so he could run for a third term. Very nice. Very nice. So, yes, Bloomberg is a turd. But I don't know if he had anything to do with her getting arrested. I know he pushed when uh, Plaxio Burgess shot himself in the leg with his own gun. He pushed to make sure he went to jail and he was made an example of. Because you can't have a gun in New York City. So I don't live in that sh Ugh. I, I, I... I really want to go off, but I'll be nice. I know there's people that live there. Oh, Goose Fraba. I'm not trying to alienate anybody. I, I grew up outside New York, but I will never live in that city. You know why I won't ever live there? Because it's a complete, to, uh, what do you call it, to, totalitarian state. Couldn't get the word out. It, it, it is just a complete and utter police state. I know the whole country is becoming like that, but New York is just, it's almost like New York is the vetting ground for what they want to do with the rest of the country. And a lot of things that go on there do eventually go to other parts of the country. The all the police departments in this country look up to New York City. A lot of the fire departments look up to the FDNY. I know I was a firefighter for six years. And we had guys in our department that just, uh, you know, the FDNY, uh, they, if they could have blown the chiefs at the time, they would have. It's just, so they, they wanted to emulate them and be them as much as they possibly could be. So it's not even so much as, is that a good move or is that a right thing to do? It's, well, the NYPD does it or the FDNY does it or Mike Bloomberg, he's a good mayor, he does it. So all these other power-hungry, greedy, scumbag mayors around the countries, they, they, around our country rather, they get, they get the idea. Governors get the ideas of things from him. He goes and talks to governors. He goes and talks to Congress about taking guns away all the time. All right, enough. I've wasted enough time on him. I could do a whole show on that piece of shit. I cannot stand him. Ugh. He's evil. He is, I'm telling you right now, he is part of the New World Order. He is evil. He is without a doubt evil. He does not care about anybody but himself. He's part of the problem. Anyway, oh, I just can't stand him. He's, I'm so glad I don't live in that crappy city. All right. As I, as I promised, I'm going to play this clip really quick. It's only about three minutes. This is what John and I were talking about with uh, the guy getting arrested for his daughter drawing a picture of a gun. And if you think it was just, well, he got arrested and then they let him go. No, no, no. <laughs> no. It's much worse. And we're talking about 
Kitchener, Ontario man today who has been arrested. His crime? Well, his daughter drew a picture of a gun at school. Police hauled him away to the station, strip searched him, all because of his four-year-old's drawing. So let's bring in Brian Dunstan, who's been following developments on this story. And the more you hear about this, this story, the more ridiculous it, it comes. If it were not such a, you know, threat to this guy's life and reputation and that the, the well-being of his daughter, it's now, ridiculous. Absolutely. You know, I, Alex, you look at this story, and it's more than a head scratcher. You got to really raise an eyebrow and think, how can a, a little girl, kindergarten, draw a picture that has such almost long-lasting repercussions? Hey, let me paint the picture for you, not to be punished here. A four-year-old girl goes to school, draws a picture of her father, and uh, the teacher asks the, pic the little girl, what have you drawn there? And she goes, that's my daddy shooting burglars and monsters. Teacher takes the picture to the principal. They call Child Protective Services. Child Protective Services calls the police. Father comes to the school to pick up his kids. It's taken to the principal's office where there's three police officers waiting for him, arrested, charged with possession of a firearm, handcuffed, walked out of the school, taken into the back of a car, and all the way to the police station where he strip searched. No weapon was ever found. Now, there's some question as to whether their house was searched. That hasn't been determined yet. But the uh, man who was arrested, Jesse Sansoni, only signed a release after he was released. So there's a lot of questions about whether the authorities even had the right to do what they did. But the bottom line here is how do you take a picture from a four-year-old four girl in kindergarten and extrapolate from that that a man is in possession of a firearm? It's a leap of logic that has some people scratching their heads. And as I said up the top, raising an eyebrow. Yes, and I would think a few defense lawyers out there are probably champing uh, at the bit to get in on this one because it just seems that his rights uh, were, if in fact this is true, mm -hmm. his rights were completely trumped. I mean, was he read his rights? Did the police go into his home? Did they have a warrant? Because yep. if they didn't, then a lot of lines have been crossed here. And those are all questions that need to be determined. One of the things we should say, though, ja uh, Alex, is, th is this. They have to follow a certain protocol in schools. And when a teacher feels that a child uh, well-being is threatened, they have a protocol in place that they have to follow, and that's what they did. Now, you can put it under the heading of CYA, which we all know means cover your derriere, but, you know, this is what they have to do. And if the teacher feels this is warranted, they go through these steps, and that's what led to Jesse Sansoni being arrested and ultimately charged and then released for having possession of a firearm. My question would be, did they talk to the parents at any time? Were the parents called and questioned? Mm -hmm. Well, as near as I can determine, Alex, that was never uh, part of the process. They went right to Child Protective Services, who went to the police. Police showed up, and boom, Jesse Sansoni was taken away. Uh, further to this, too, the, they, the police went to the home and brought the mother with their 15-month-old child, who was already at home, to the station. The children were taken and questioned. The mother was sitting there not knowing what was going on. All she knew that her husband was in custody and charged with something. She was unsure. Mm. All right, there's still a lot of questions. I know we have crews on the ground trying to chase this story, so we'll mm -hmm. continue bringing you to them. It, that's insane. They went and took his kids and questioned his kids. Does daddy have a gun? Does daddy have a gun? It, that's insane. And you know, they do that here in the States, too, John. It's not just up in Canada. That, see, that, that's this, that's this uh, you know, they're all out to kill cops mentality that all police are being trained with. You know, the civilians, everybody wants to kill you. If they're not a cop or a lawyer, you know, or, you know, if they're not in the community, they, will, they want to get you. You know, society's full of scumbags, and we need to, you know, we need to weed through them. That's what they're taught. It's just insane. I mean, it's insane that this guy got arrested up there by your cops for having a... A, a, you know, his daughter drawing a picture of a gun, but that kind of stuff, that kind of insane thing goes on down here in the States, too. I mean, it's out of control. Well, this is what I don't get. So the cops are there, they, they find him there, then they arrest him for possession of a firearm, even though all that the cops have found is a picture of a gun drawn by a four-year-old girl in crayons. Well, that's so what, the, what the one newscaster said. How do they extrapolate from a picture that the guy's got a gun? And if they searched his car and he didn't have a gun, and he didn't have a gun on him, then he didn't break any laws, and they just violated his rights. They should have let him go, but no. From that, they go and they search his house, and they didn't have a warrant or anything. They just went in and searched his house and then take his kids. That's, that's insane. Stop that's insane. Trying. Say again, John. 
It's Talk Canada. Yeah, Talk Crime Canada. Talk, talk Crime Canadistan, eh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Here's the article I wanted to read you. Mom goes to jail for protecting daughter from TSA. It's from the Patriot Update website. And I reposted it over at federaljack.com. That's where I'm reading it from. People are calling her overprotective. I call her a hero. Andrea Fernella Abbott was arrested when she refused to allow her daughter, age withheld, to be sexually touched by TSA agents. The New York Daily News reports that Abbott was arrested at Nashville Airport. Okay, it was in Nashville. She was arrested at Nashville Air Airport when she shouted and swore at TSA agents, telling them she wouldn't allow her young daughter to have her, quote, crotch grabbed, unquote. Abbott's daughter was singled out for a pat-down after Abbott refused to go through the airport's body scanners. Notice the daughter... The young daughter was, was chosen, not the mother, the young daughter. Because, hey, she could be a terrorist, so we have to pat her down. Just, this is what I, talk, what I mean about no effing common sense. Security theater, you want to know why? Anybody that lives near an airport can tell you that the planes fly right over them all the time. It would be easier to do something to the plane when it was in the air than on the ground because there's less protection. Okay? Anybody with half a brain knows this. So this is all security theater, and this isn't about security. It's about getting you to bend to their will, and they're using your fear of a fictional enemy to let them touch your daughter's crotch and grope your wife. And I, for one, can't fly because of this, because if someone touched my wife, the guy would have two broken arms. Anybody that knows me knows I speak the truth. I would knock someone out for doing this. I've, 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 look, I've had people do less towards my wife. And I took it very badly. So this, this would not fly. My daughter, if I had a daughter and you tried touching my kid, I would lose my mind. I'd lose my mind. I would lose my effing mind. And, you know, John and I were talking about this during the break. And we're, we're going to get into, we're going to get into the, the, the something else, another aspect of, you know, if someone did so, such and such to a kid, what, what you would do. Uh, but right now, I want to focus on the, the TSA thing for a second. John, if you had kids, and you're like me, you, you know, you, you and I are the same mind on this. Neither one of us has kids right now because it's not the type of world to bring a child into with everything that's going on. What would you do if somebody tried grabbing, you had a daughter, someone tried grabbing your daughter's crotch? Wouldn't you knock the guy out? You wouldn't care. That's your daughter. Yeah, it'd be a physical confrontation. I mean, it wouldn't even be them trying. It would just be them requesting to do it. Would be that's it, you know? Yeah, we're just gonna pat down. No, you're not. No. <laughs> like yeah, that's, dude, it's I guess it's I would handle it very bad. Look who very, they're very bad. It's they're they're singling out the little the, the young girls and you know this young girl terrorist draws picture of gun young girl terrorist at airport gets patted down. You know, I mean, this is look out. Al Gorda is is out there gonna get you. Yeah, Al, Al Teenager uh, is, is out there with Al, Al Justin Bieber uh, is out there teaming up with them. They're, they're they're all trying to take over the world. It's just ridiculous. Maybe Justin Bieber is really the devil and trying to take over the world. Who knows? But he he's definitely not Al Qaeda. And neither is some, you know, twelve year old girl or even younger. And you know, you know what the sick part is? These guys usually go after like the little eight and nine year old girls. John, that's the that's the sick shit. These are the guys that remind me of. Uh, What's his name? Tickle Trunk. Oh, Dr. Uh, dress up there. Yeah, dude. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, you got to go back. I think it was in November, uh, like around Thanksgiving time, somewhere around there. We did an episode, uh, November of 2011, I should say. Uh, we did a, an episode of WTF, and John was on with us, and we, we were having a contest of things that could gross us out, like, you know, like creepier the, the creepiest child stuff that we could think of, you know, that would creep you out and like, ooh. And we, we were like Mr. Rogers, uh, the dude from Nickelodeon, Dr. Mr. Wizard. And then John came on and trumped all of us. We even, even Pee Wee Herman got trumped by Mr. Dress Up, one of the creepiest things I've ever heard. And Tuscan happened to be on with us that night, and he found the audio clip from the opening. Only Bob could find it that fast. 
and he he plays it and it was just creepy the guys like oh come into my spare bedroom and it was this this is like a kid show john was telling everybody in canada and oh come into the the bedroom this is my spare bedroom where my friends sleep and he that's where he had this thing called the tickle trunk and i we, you know we've joked on and off since then like you know you'll you'll, you'll hear especially on wtf but even on this show or other shows somebody will say something and you'll hear the tickle trunk get brought up that's what it means it was just this creepy children's show Ugh. Well, these Did you ever watch that show when you were a kid, John? Uh, yeah, I didn't like it. My sisters watched it. It was uh, <laughs> not a good show. Yeah, well, well, you traumatizing. didn't like it. It's traumatizing. But these are the type of folks we got uh, applying for jobs down at the TSA because who else would want to grope women and children and other strangers? Dude, Mr. Uh, Dressup's in charge of the TSA. That guy is probably a supervisor. Yeah, he's he, Manit Napolitano is underneath. Mr. Dress Up. That's a bad picture of my right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man at Napolitano. That's my favorite. Her, that and Man Coulter. Yeah. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, they are evil. Those, the, those two vile spewing... R- r- oh, they just spew hatred, both of them. Man Coulter more... The, the other one kind of just... She has, the, you know... Uh, Man it just has a... a, a uh, this over... Uh, overt hatred for freedom and uh, everything that is good. Man Calder just runs her mouth. I think it's interesting that her book is called Demonic, John. Because <laughs> once her attitude starts going, you can't get her mouth to stop. That's the thing. <laughs> once her Adam's apple starts going. <laughs> uh, I see we I, could feed all of uh, the, the starving nations of Africa with Man Coulter's Adam's apple. <laughs> uh, God, she is a deplorable else. human being. Yeah, that was and somebody I'm not, else. Oh. I'm not liberal. I'm not a. I'm not a flaming lefty liberal by any means. You know, I'm not. I'm not right wing. I don't buy into either paradigm. But I don't. It, you know, I, I'm not picking on her because she picked. You know, she's 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 a conservative woman. But that's not why I'm picking on her. I'm picking on her because she tells people that radiation is good for them, and that the Japanese people around Fukushima should be glad that they got bathed in radiation. Or she says things like there was no asbestos in the World Trade Center towers. Oh yeah, she said that. She said that on Eric Bowling's show last year. They did two hit pieces on Fox. One on morons in the morning. That's Steve Ducey and those other idiots. Okay, I call them morons in the morning. Yes, they they had one on their show with James Meggs from Popular Mechanics, a man with no engineering background whatsoever. Used to be the f- like former editor in chief over at uh, Entertainment Weekly. But yeah, yeah, he he's a he's someone good to have because he knows what the hell he's talking about to debunk nine eleven conspiracy theorists. And uh, the other one was with Man Coulter uh, on uh, Fox Business with Eric Bowling, another douche. And man said that there was no asbestos in the World Trade Center, and that's why it burned so fast and fell down into a pile, and everything was turned to dust. Well, and then unfortunately, uh, people will believe that crap. What do you think of the uh, MSNBC's uh, the Randall Mad- Maddow show? Uh, Randall. She's another one. I can't stand her too. You know, when Bush was in office, you had uh, Chris Matthews and all them over there whining and, you know, fighting a good fight, supposedly, right? And then as soon as Obama gets in office, it's all... Mm-hmm. They just switched roles. Yeah. You know, that's all they did. Fox News became the anti, you know, we, anything that's anti-Obama, they'll air it. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's all game. You only you only have one choice, right? You have what CBC it is. This is a, a version of the BBC. Yeah, the communist uh, broadcasting co- company. Yeah, it is BBC owned. Yeah, so it's like BBC Light, basically up there. Yeah, BBC Canadastan, the CBC, and then we've got some local channels. But yeah, it's all controlled mainstream media. Same propaganda. They they try to play it. Uh, a little less ridiculous than the U.S. to try to seem more credible, but it's it's still all lies. 
Let us never tolerate out. Do you guys watch our media, like our news, with while well, eating popcorn and candy and stuff, like going to the movies? Because it's I know it's got to be entertaining as hell. Our people channels, and more than half of them are U.S. channels. People are always oh. asking me. No wonder people in Canada are so brainwashed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're going to break. When we come back, final segment. Don't go anywhere. All right, final segment of tonight's episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. I want to thank all of you for listening. Again, you listeners are the reason why I come back and do this three days a week, plus all the podcasts I do and the stuff with Federal Jack and all the video editing and then going on other people's shows. I do it all for you guys and to bring you the information. So thank you for taking the time out of your day or night or whatever, depending on where you are in the world, and tuning in. I do appreciate it. Love y'all. All All right. Before I forget, I want to have John plug his websites uh, or his website, I should say, and uh, his YouTube channel because we're probably going to end up going right up to the end of the show, which we know I normally do. And I I want John, I want his work to get a little light on it. Uh, Spread his videos, you know, take a a page or two from his notebook, uh, as it were, and run with it. Do your own type of info jamming. So, John, go ahead and give yourself some shameless plugs. Um, Yeah, you can find Info Jam, the mainstream, on Facebook. Just uh, facebook.com forward slash Info Jam, the mainstream. And uh, you can find everything... Uh, all our stuff, our other websites, and my Facebook and YouTube channels on my blog, which is uh, John Connor 1984.wordpress.com. And uh, yeah, if you scroll down the bottom, you'll find links to the YouTube and Facebook and everything else. And uh, you also, that's actually the best place to keep updated on all my stuff is on my blog rather than a YouTube or a Facebook page because everything goes there first, it seems. So subscribe to my RRS feed. <laughs> there you go. It's even better. Just put his RSS feed on uh, on your website or just subscribe to it and have it come to you and you can read his stuff. I like his videos. I, I like I like your style. I like the way you do it. And you use a little bit of humor, too. You have, John, ladies and gentlemen, John has a, a, a rather large uh, and at times sick and twisted <laughs> sense of humor. Uh, it's one of his best qualities, I think. Uh and uh, I, I actually can't wait to hear your show because I, I want to see what kind of stuff you get into. I know you I know you can be serious when you want to be like, we've been somewhat serious tonight, actually mostly serious tonight. But I know that you can throw one-liners and stuff out there that, you know, make people think. So I'm interested to see uh, how your show goes. Um, let me ask you this before I, I, I get into... Uh, I have one final thing I want to cover with you, but bef- I, I want to kind of deviate for a minute. I, I didn't cover this. I, I, I haven't. Uh, I know other people have, but I, I haven't covered this. But I want to get your take on it. What do you think of Andrew Breitbart's sudden demise out of nowhere, right before he's supposed to release some Obama videos or something? You think it's shady at all? Uh, it, it sounds shady, but I haven't looked uh, too deeply into it myself. I've seen the headline and, and checked, you know, the initial report but it's it i guess it really depends on the information that was going to be leaked and and how damning it is or you know th- it is suspicious uh, on on how they reported his death it seems there's two different you know there's a, a few different stories on where he died or a couple different stories on where he died you know some media saying he died at his house some saying he died in front of a, some hospital or something i don't know so you know i'm not i'm not 100% sure on that and the other thing is i wasn't I've heard of Andrew Breitbart, but I wasn't familiar with his work myself. Well, I'm not a big fan of his work. I mean, I find it kind of suspicious that he said that he was going to release videos and then he he drops dead. But no, I'm not a big fan of his stuff or anything like that. He's he was actually very uh, he was very right wing, but he was very much if he believed it or not, I don't know. Person, you know, if he personally believed it or not, I don't know. But he the way he talked, if I if I had to judge it based on the way he spoke uh, publicly. And the way he belonged, he really believed in the left-right paradigm, you know, the, the, and he pushed that whole idea of right versus left and the liberal left, the liberal left. And yes, there are people that have that mindset that do, you know, have access to power and uh, have a certain amount of influence that quote unquote are of the liberal left. But he 
she, I don't know if he knew it or not, but he he did push that he helped you know keep pushing that paradigm and keep people in that 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 false mindset that it's this you know it's the the left or are the you know oh they're they're crazy and no no though the right's crazy and, you know no it wasn't like that they're all scumbags okay none of them care about anybody at all there is such a disconnect with the people in in Congress if you wanna. If you want to prove how corrupt the system is, vote for Ron Paul. And everybody says, Popeye, why do you say that? Why do I say that? Because if Ron Paul got like 80% of the vote in an election and they still said, oh, he – like let, – let's say, for instance, they gave him <clears throat> the nomination, right? And it was him versus Obama. And he got like 80% of the vote. He would automatically win. So what would happen if they tried to switch it and Obama got, you know, they, they switched numbers so it looked like Paul only got 20%, yet 80% of the country knew that they voted for Paul, there would be a problem. You think eight, that 80% of the country would sit down idly and take it? No, I'm not saying that 80% will vote. What I'm saying is if you look at it that way and you, you, you look at it that even if Paul didn't get the nomination for the GOP, say they put Romney or Santorum or some douchebag, Gingrich, whatever, Right, say they give it to to Romney, and if everybody that believed in Paul, everybody that believed in his message, if everybody just be that believed in freedom, you don't even have to like Ron Paul. If you, you like freedom, you like being able to get up and wear what you want to wear and say what you want to say. Do you like the fact that you can listen to my radio show at close to midnight and hear me say the word shit on air because of the freedom of speech? Do you like that? Do you like that you can even listen to this radio show? Well, then vote for Paul. Even if you don't agree with everything, vote based on freedom. Because it's the only thing. First of all, if he did get in, then, you know, we'd hold him to account. Now you got to do what you said you're going to do. But y it, it, it would send an overwhelming message. They wouldn't be, it would expose the corruption. If 80% of the people voted for this guy, and, you know, they said, no, Obama won. It, it would, it, do you realize how many that would wake up? At, you know what I mean? Obviously, if 80% of the people are voting for him, they're awake. But do you realize my point? Even if 45 or 50% of the country voted for him and they said, no, it was a landslide victory the other way around, blah, 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 blah. You would have so many people that would be able to expose that fraud that eventually that would exponentially grow. And even people that would have voted for the other guy would see. Why do you think there's people that vote for uh, Ron Paul now that voted for Obama in 2008? Because they've woken up. It's exponentially growing. The truth spreads like a virus. It just is. It doesn't matter. You, the truth never needs excuses. The truth, you know, my mother used to tell me, it's easier to remember a truth than it is a lie because a lie... If I'm telling you a story for the first time and it's a lie, okay, and I've made it up in my head, you're going to remember it because it's an experience that you shared with me. But that lie, I'm not going to remember because people don't remember lies. Usually they, they, they have to lie on the spot or something. Uh, and even if it's a long thought out one, eventually over time, they forget details. But the person that you told the lie to, they remember it because it's a fresh experience between two people. That's their their perspective of it, you and them, so it's in their head. And you go and do other things and you'll forget little minute details, but that person won't. And that's how people get caught in lies. Whereas the truth is just the truth. You never have to worry you know, about remembering the truth because it just is, and you know it is. And there's always evidence to back it up. So it's, it, it, it just try to keep that mindset. What say you, John? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't, yeah, I, I guess the truth is the truth. You know, there's no, uh, there's no two truths. There's no, there's no three truths. You know, two plus two doesn't equal four and five and six. It only equals four, you know, but the, the UN and all these globalists, they want to tell us that, you know, two plus two can equal five and it can equal six and it can equal 10 and, and, but it can't equal four. All us that are saying it equals four, well, we're nuts and we're, and we're, we're terrorists. We're a bunch of uh, gun drawers, you know, basically. You ever hear the cops say to people, oh, you're, you, you're one of them that reads books too much? Yeah. Like, <laughs> book reading guys, aren't you? 
that's yeah, that, that's why they have they you know they go after guys that have the brain power of a piece of toast because they they, they don't want anybody to have any common sense. TSA fired all the 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 employees that had any common sense. They went around when the X-ray scanners were coming in and they and the, the pat downs were coming in and they said, "Do you have a problem doing this?" And the people that said, "Yeah, I don't think we should do it," they got fired. They got pink slips. There were articles all over about it. Even the mainstream media talked about it. Hmm. They don't talk about that anymore. They talk about how the terrorists are up your ass and they need to stick a glove up there to get Osama bin Laden out. Unbelievable. And people buy this crap. Uneffing believable. Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost out of time. We only got a, about a minute left here. John, any final thoughts? Well, speaking of OBL, when they released the information, when Obama did his live Facebook broadcast, there was, I don't know, there must have been 20 info jammers that just... You know, jam the whole wall with Building 7 uh, links the whole 30 minutes. I love it. That's, see, that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Little things like that. Take the Twitter feeds. Take, take the uh, trending topics on Twitter. Go on Facebook, social media. Take it back. Take it back with truth. Spread links to all these different websites, federaljack.com, intelhub.com, all these different true sites. Spread the info. Spread the videos. That's how we're going to win this. Grassroots level. we got to take our country back. We're out of time. Thank you. Tune in Sunday, second hour guest, Adam Kokesh. John, thank you for hanging out, my brother, and thank you for what you do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out. I'll see you in a few days.